Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am a Stuart Medal. I am not going to give an answer according to Sharia, because I'm not a scholar. According to alims, according to scholars, what breaks the shahadat? When you declare God, you declare shirk, it breaks the shahadat. When you uh, deny the prophethood of the Holy Prophet, you break your shahadat. And everything that is contained in that, denying the oneness of Allah, breaks the shahadat. For example, you deny one ayat of the Quran, you deny the whole Quran, you break the shahadat. Then, those are the zahir. We're not here to learn that. That one you can Google and you can find out easy. But of course, these days there's so many Google sheikhs too, and Yahoo sheikhs. May Allah protect us from that kind of thing, foolishness. What is our shahadat? To say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Quickly, sit down. Just put it there. Yeah. No, that is our shahadat. To say and to witness that there is only one Allah. There is no Allah except for Allah. What breaks that first part of the shahadat? To declare an Allah other than Allah. Which creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created declares itself an ilah, no creature. Shaitan is not declaring itself an ilah. No angel declares itself an ilah. No mountain, no tree declares itself to be an ilah. No creature declares itself to be an ilah, except for one. No, it's not man. It is the ego. Only the ego declares itself to be an ilah. You understand? The nafs. So if we cannot control and break this nafs, it will continue to be a challenge to our shahadat. It will continue to challenge the authority of Allah. It will still continue to declare itself an ilah as it did in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah says, who am I and who are you? And our ego, our nafs is saying, you are you and I am me. So if you are not understanding your ego, are you not catching your ego? You can say non-stop, La ilaha illallah, non-stop you can say. But if you don't understand your nafs, there is still an ilah that is declaring itself that is going to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that it can challenge, but it's just saying it. And Allah, of course, is allowing it to say. So what is our concentration, especially in the Naqshib and the order, especially in this Jamaat? It is the ego. It goes to the root of the root of the root of the problem. La ilaha illallah. So we are concentrating. La ilaha. La ilaha. No. No gods. No gods. No existence. No reality except for Allah. If you don't concentrate on that, you will never reach to Allah. 
where all other tariqats they concentrate on Allah, then maybe later to concentrate on La ilaha. We are doing the opposite, which is really the correct way to concentrate on La ilaha, then illallah. That illallah is not us, is not our doing. It is not our effort. Our effort is la ilaha. You understand? It is not with our effort that we're going to understand, uh, experience, be witness to Allah. If you're still doing that, it's still the ego. It is Allah who is going to make us to experience Him. But the priority our job is the first part of the shahadat, la ilaha. To get rid of that, that we can do and we must. So if you are not concentrating on your ego and understanding the tricks and the trap of your ego, you can be saying the shahadat 24 hours. You may be breaking it. 24 hours, every single time that you are saying it. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah wasalam. Now you come. To the base, to the bottom of the matter. How are you going to get rid of your ilahs? It is through Muhammad Rasulullah. You're going to follow his way, his advice. You're going to follow the ones that he has appointed over you. You are not even going to uh, declare your own existence. You're going to declare the existence of the Prophet And the Prophet's existence is not the same as Allah's existence, of course. One is Allah, the other one is a Habib. He's still a creature of Allah. But his existence is Abduhu wa Rasulu. Abduhu wa Rasulu. So, if you are not then taking the example and the lifestyle and the sunnah of the Holy Prophet, wasalam, your shahadat is. broken up. There are two billion Muslims, isn't it? Two billion Muslims, we may say everyone is declaring shahadat, correct? We are not Wahhabis to say, no, 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 we accept your shahadat, we don't accept your shahadat. No, everyone who declares a shahadat is a Muslim. When Dajjal comes, there are so many Muslims still saying the shahadat, but with the tongue. It hasn't entered into their hearts. They'll be following that job. But they still have that shahadat. But that shahadat is not the shahadat of the Prophet as taught by him. You understand? It is not the shahadat as taught by his inheritors. That's why we keep saying we're leaning against the shahadat of our shaykh, of the awliyaullah of the Prophet. Because now, let me give you an example. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he went to war. Right after the Prophet ﷺ passed, and there were so many tribes in Arabia who betrayed Islam, betrayed the trust. And so many of them, they still declared themselves to be Muslims. It continued from the time Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, and Ali. There's still so many groups. That says still saying we are Muslims, but we don't want to follow Bakr. We don't want to follow Usman. We don't want to follow Umar. We don't want to follow Ali. We want to follow our own selves. Today, still, the West was supporting only these kinds of Muslims, these square head shaitanic Wahhabis. And today, the fruit of that is this ISIS, MISIS. That is the fruit that comes out from the tree that was planted, and they gave water to it. 
Yeah, Le Sunat has always been chopping that tree down, trying to burn the roots, but they gave life to it more and more. This is one of the conditions of the Ahir Zaman, it has to happen. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he went to war with so many of them, and so many of them, they are declaring the Shahadat too. In fact, on record, he's saying to the Sahabis, and to the Tabi'ins, he's saying today we're going to war with a group of people. They are your brothers. They say the Shahadat like you. They pray like you. Understand? They fast like you. They go to the Hajj like you. But they are not accepting our authority that the Holy Prophet has given to us. They are going to cry when they are striking you. They are going to say, Ya Allah. We are going to say, Ya Muhammad. And we are going to go to war with them. So now, it is not just through the tongue. And when Mahdi salam comes, He is not going to look at through the tongue what people are saying. And he's going to look through their hearts. And whatever that is in your heart, it will show in your life. That's all. Whatever is in your heart, it will show in your life and in your lifestyle. That is the nature of man. If in your heart it is money, you're going to be interested and be busy with money. You can say, I don't love money. You can say, I like something else. But you're going to be busy because everything has the proof. And that is the proof. If you are busy with power, your life is going to be showing that. That is in your heart. Whatever that is in your heart is going to show. So now, in our way, we are not doing anything but concentrating on that shahadat and not break that shahadat. To look at what breaks the shahadat and to fix it. Not to look at the shahadat, but to look at what breaks the shahadat. Not to look at our spirit, but to look at what is tying up our spirit and choking it. Not to look at Allah, but to look at the veils that prevents us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our way, you understand? This is what we are concentrating on. It is to keep that shahadat. And we just mentioned this yesterday, the most important thing, the value of a shahadat. Inshallah, still, with all this thinking, with all this doing, we are asking for the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ and the shafaat of our shaykh and the shafaat of the holy ones because without their madad, without their shafaat, again, we are hopeless and helpless. We cannot do anything. And in reality, if we can do anything, if we are able to do anything, it is only because of their shafaat because of their madad. It's foolish Wahhabis. I'm going so many masjids. We talk so much. We talk about this. We talk about that. They cannot say nothing. They got so fed up. They say, brother, just concentrate on Quran and Sunnah. Why are you talking about Shaykh? Shaykh is still a man. I say, you idiot. Our Shaykh is concentrating on Quran and Sunnah. All his life is Quran and Sunnah. That's what he's breathing. That's what he's saying. Every single word is Quran and Sunnah. And you're telling me, concentrate on Quran and Sunnah? Yes, you want to concentrate on Quran and Sunnah according to your ego, according to Shaitan's Quran and Sunnah, according to the hypocrite's Quran and Sunnah. But you don't want to follow the Quran and Sunnah of the friends of Allah. Huh? This is how the Dajjal tricks the 21st century Muslims. You understand? So may our service and may our faith, may our worship 
May everything that we do be accepted for the sake of the Prophet والسلام, and the Allah in our shaykh. Fatiha.